As efforts are underway to create a national historic designation for Bronzeville, students like Ishmael Smith preserve its history. Smith, while at Amelia Earhart Elementary School, created a display about the racial covenants that confined blacks to a narrow swath of Southside land along what is now Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. I decided to do this because it made me really think about where I came from and how I had it when I was growing up. And it, I thought it would be pretty much a good idea. I went on the internet, read books, asked Miss Stewart, asked my mother, asked my grandmothers, asked historians. Well, here I have my title, of course. Not the nice life side. And this left panel contains the Great Migration North, starting from the Emancipation Proclamation down to where the Black Belts were formed. This center panel, which is also the largest, contains documents of how Woodland is keeping the neighborhood white by pushing African Americans out. And down here, this is a little more in depth of where they actually put us in. I actually put little houses so where whites lived, and the red fence shows where the Woodland subdivision was and where African Americans were to stay. I need this third panel shows how Carl A. Hansberry helped defeat the Woodland and Sugar Covenants by taking it to court and winning the case and actually helping to destroy some of the slums, even though he was considered a slum lord. But he actually got rid of the Sugar Covenants, but he did not really get rid of racism and housing. Bronzeville Information Center President Harold Lucas was impressed by Smith. He's a tall kid, and you would think, just looking at him, he was older than he is. Uh, I felt he did a, a great amount of in-depth research on the factual histories behind the Woodlawn Restricted Covenants. I thought that it was um, clearly a mother's love for her child that has imbued this young man with the kind of discipline to be a very successful individual in the society. Smith's mother, Anita Howard Smith, always expressed the importance of investigating and seeking knowledge to her son. From the beginning, uh, it, it's always been a coaching and a pushing type of thing, of trying to get him to, to realize the importance of history. Uh, and, and because we as African Americans, we're losing bases with our historical background. Uh, so pretty much, I, I let him pick a topic, and he, he chose to do something on housing. While teaching at Earhart Elementary School, Stacy Stewart worked with students in the annual History Fair competition. Stewart, a descendant of Jamaican immigrants, sought to get her students actively involved in history. Um, I'm really proud of the students and their efforts in researching. We had children to collaborate at the museums. I would say, okay, I'm going to DeSable. It's family day at DeSable in February. If you meet me there, you might find something out about your topic. And even though it started off being schoolwork, the children really enjoyed working and collaborating and researching and finding out things that other people didn't ordinarily knew, uh, know, and it was really very motivational for them. Lucas said the Bronzeville Community Development Partnership is interested in acquiring the Hansberry House. He also looks forward to working with students like Ishmael to spread the word about the history. We do look forward to him uh, working with us in this conference room uh, to lay out the history of Earl B. Dickerson and we also look forward to working with both him and his family and securing through the Bronzeville Historic Preservation Society the property at 6140 South Road so we can turn it into a house museum and an archival study facility for urban planning around the restricted covenants. For Medill Reports Multimedia, I'm Daryl Swint.